Please stand. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, as we gather on this glorious day, we do so to celebrate the beauty of this day. Beauty not merely from nice dresses or flowers or the fact that the Groomsmen got their hair and nails done early this morning. But beautiful because of love. Love that Kristen and Chris will profess to each other in their vows, unconditional love, lifelong, eternal love. As we celebrate the beauty and glory of this kind of love, we begin by singing the Gloria. Yes. 
sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Brothers and sisters, as we gather, we do so not just to get gussied up and have a fun party, although you look good, so good work on that, but we do so especially to pray for this couple on this day. Pray for them as they lay down their lives for each other. Pray that they might receive the grace of this sacrament from our Lord. And so, let us pray. Lord, who in creating the human race willed that man and wife should be one. Join, we pray, in a bond of inseparable love, these your servants who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become by your grace witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And you may be seated for the readings from Scripture. A reading from the Song of Songs. Hark, my lover, here he comes, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Here he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattices. My lover speaks and he says to me, arise my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one and come. Oh, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the secret recesses of the cliff, let me see you. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and you are lovely. My lover belongs to me and I to him. He says to me, set me as a seal on your heart and a seal on your arm. For stern as death is love, relentless as a netherworld is devotion. Its flames are a blazing fire. Deep waters cannot quench love nor floods sweep it away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forgive. 
forget not all God's blessings. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Slow to anger, rich in kindness. The Lord is kind. Gracious and merciful, slow to anger, full of kindness, good to all creation, full of compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, the Lord is kind and merciful. in kindness, the Lord is kind and merciful. The goodness of God is from age to age, blessing those who choose to love, and justice toward God's children on all who keep the covenant. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Slow to anger, rich in kindness. The Lord is kind. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous. It is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the Pharisees, a scholar of the law, tested Jesus by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and all the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. As Forrest Gump would say, I may not be a smart man, but I know what love is. Love is something that's not easy to define, not easy to explain, not easy to put words to. When people are asked the question, what is love? People usually stumble over their words or give some sort of vague, flowery, fluffy answer. In Greek, there are actually four different words for love. Philio, storge, eros, and agape. I tell you this so you think I'm really smart. But of course, in English, there's only one word for love. Now, while it may be difficult to define love, to explain love, to put love into words, it is pretty easy, actually, to recognize love to see what love looks like, to point to examples of love around us and say, that is love. Kristen and Chris, the reason we are here today is because we recognize the beauty of your love. And so I would like to point to three examples in particular that shine forth with the beauty of that love, the love that you profess for each other today, the love that you will live out for the rest of your lives in the sacrament of marriage. First, as Christians, we see the beauty of a free gift of selfless love, and we see what that looks like, especially as Christians, in Christ on the cross. Here is a person who is willing to be mocked, to be beaten, to be spat upon, to be nailed to a cross, to pour out his life, even to suffer, and to do it out of unconditional love. Christ shows us his unconditional love in a beautiful way on the cross. And the beauty of this love is something that shines forth in an incredible way, especially in the sacrifice, the unconditional love of married couples. Married couples show each other Christ-like love in their sacrifice for each other. Now, Chris, I'm not suggesting that on your first Valentine's Day you rope yourself to a cross to prove how much you love Kristen. Don't do that. That would be weird. <laughs> but no doubt, in married love, you'll have more than enough opportunities to pour yourself out, to sacrifice for each other, to give yourself completely and lay down your life out of love. When people see this in your marriage and your family, they will be able to point to you as we point to Christ on the cross and say, now that is unconditional love. Second, I would like to point to the scriptures that you've chosen today for your wedding. The first reading speaks about love as a blazing fire that cannot be quenched. In the second reading, St. Paul gives us a list of qualities of love, things like patience, kindness, and perhaps most important, forgiveness. And in the gospel reading, we hear that the greatest love is a total love with our whole heart, our whole mind, and our whole soul. In your vows, you witness to this kind of love we've heard in the scriptures. You are promising not just to be polite to each other and get along, you already do that, but in your marriage vows, you are promising that the love that you have for the other person cannot be quenched by anything, 
you are promising to always be patient, to be kind, and to always forgive each other no matter what. You are promising that no matter what happens, you will love the other with your whole heart, your whole mind, and your whole soul. You are promising to give your whole self undivided to each other forever. Third and finally, I would like to point to Kristen and Chris as an example of love. Oftentimes when I talk to couples about why they want to get married, they speak about how it makes me happy, how that person completes me, how I couldn't imagine life without this other person. And usually when people say this, I say, wow, sounds like marriage is an awful lot about you. They don't really like it when I say that. <laughs> Kristen and Chris, it's been fun to get to know you over the past months to prepare not only for the sacrament of marriage, but other sacraments as well. One thing that strikes me in talking to you is that you are not so naive as to think that love is some sort of emotion or fleeting feeling, but instead that love is deeper than this. It is a choice, a choice of unconditional love that no matter what happens 10, 30, or 50 years down the road, that you will choose to never give up on each other. You will choose to love each other. You will choose to always be with each other no matter what. For my money, there is nothing more beautiful than this kind of love. And while it may be hard to define love, to put it into words or to explain it, perhaps we don't need a clear definition when there are couples like Kristen and Chris. We don't need to point to a definition or try to understand it with our minds because we can see it with our eyes. We can experience it in our hearts and in our families. As you say yes to marriage, the beauty of that yes and your love brings greater beauty in your love and sacrifice for each other and brings even greater beauty to the world when they encounter your love. As God has called you to this sacrament, he has done so not just so we can get all gussied up and have a big party afterward, although that's certainly part of it. He has called you here because God needs you. God needs couples like you. He needs your marital love not to define love, but to be an example of love that brings greater beauty and love to everyone around you. If you do this, and as you do this, the result will be greater joy and happiness for you and greater joy and happiness for all those who encounter your love. And eventually, someday, the greatest joy of experiencing the wedding feast for all eternity in heaven. May it be so. Amen. And at this time, I invite Kristen and Chris to come forward with the wedding party for the vows and exchange of rings. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and this community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through this special sacrament, he enriches those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever 
and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Christopher and Kristen, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, I ask that you now join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. May the Lord bless these rings which you will give to each other as a sign of your love and fidelity. Together, let us stand and offer our prayers to the Heavenly Father. God has given us the gift of love, which we are asked to share with each other. We pray for an increase of love in our world, especially for those called to the vocation of marriage. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church and all its members. May our commitment to the gospel lead us to deeper faith, greater trust, and greater love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world and its leaders, may all people be treated with the dignity they deserve as God's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from illness, may they be strengthened by God's love and aided by friends and family. We pray to the Lord. For all guests gathered here today, may they enjoy the warm company of family and friends and have safe travel on their journey home. We pray to the Lord. For Kristen and Chris, may they live long, blessed lives together. May their love grow stronger each and every day and may they build a family rooted in faith and unconditional love. We pray to the Lord. For all of those who cannot be with us today, and for all the faithful departed, 
especially for Mabel and Junior Absher, Wanda Mullins, Morris Hoffman, and Donna and Donna Sorensen. May they know the peace and fullness of eternal life with God, and may we joyfully greet them again someday. We pray to the Lord. Father, you have created us out of love. You have given us your love, and you call us to share our love with each other. Send us the power of the Holy Spirit so that our faith will be seen in our lives, our hope will give us courage, and our love will be seen in our deeds. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And you may be seated for the preparation of the gifts. Those who were in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. We who live, we who die are grateful for it. Thankful for God's love. Behold, behold the Lamb of Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, May your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth in baptism gives increase to the church. Through Christ and with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Say 
blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And for the Eucharistic prayer, I invite you to kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. With all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help, May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, Chris and Kristen, who have been brought happily to their wedding day, that under your protection they may always be faithful in their lives to the covenant they have sealed in your presence. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through 
him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil this time in the wedding mass, there's a special blessing for the couple on their wedding day called the nuptial blessing. And while this blessing is specifically for the couple on their wedding day, the words of this blessing are a powerful reminder to the beauty of love for all those who live out the vocation of marriage. And so at this time, I invite Kristen and Chris to kneel for the nuptial blessing. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants, now united with Christ in marriage, he may mercifully pour out the blessings of his grace and make of one heart in love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood those he has joined by a holy covenant. O God, send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide always in your daughter, Kristen, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, May these, your servants, hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Take away the sins of 
Once again, I invite you to kneel or be seated. If you come from a faith tradition other than Catholic, I invite you to please come forward during communion time to receive a blessing. And as you do, simply place your arms in a cross over your chest, and I'll offer you a blessing. Also, as we come forward for communion, we'll come down in a single file line. So if you alternate pews from one side to another, we'll come down.
And let us stand and pray. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and the one chalice through Christ our Lord. And at this time, I invite Kristen and Chris to come forward with the wedding party for the solemn blessing. I was talking to Chris and Kristen last night at the rehearsal, and we were talking about the solemn blessing. And I was telling that in, that in all of the Catholic liturgies, a solemn blessing was reserved for the high holy feast days of the year. Things like Christmas and Easter, those are the only things that get a solemn blessing. So whenever there's a solemn blessing in the church's liturgy, what the church has done today is a big deal. So by having a solemn blessing on the day of your wedding, the church is saying you guys are a big deal because the love that you share is an image of divine love in the world. The solemn blessing is a three-part blessing, and so I invite you to respond amen to each of the three parts. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankful, thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you gathered here today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's a joy to introduce to you, united in the sacrament of marriage, Mr. and Mrs. Hoffman. <laughs> ¶¶ 